Hello and all. welcome to Arts and Crafts with a Naturalist. My name is Alex and today we will be making an awesome blouse using collected debris, litter, recycled materials and adhesive. During this crafting time, you can ask me questions about the Puget Sound and marine animals by typing them in the comments section. So today we're going to be making an awesome blouse and an awesome blouse is this art made by assembling gathered objects. And since I've worked as a teacher, one strategy I always like to tell kids for figuring out a uh, new kind of challenging word is looking for little words in it that you might already know. So at the beginning of Austin Blas, I see the word assemble. And I know assemble means to bring things together because uh, you often hear it with Avengers assemble, they're bringing all the different superheroes together. And even though we're gonna be doing uh, art today, I also wanna make a science connection. So uh, in the NGSS, Next Generation Science Standards, uh, there's an earth and uh, human activity strain. And at the kinder level, here's how they put the, kind of the core idea of earth and human activity. Things that people do to live comfortably can affect the world around them, but they can make choices that reduce their impacts on land, water, air, and other living things. And this continues up through the grade levels and kind of builds in complexity. So by fifth grade, students are looking at how human activities in agriculture, industry, and everyday life have had major effects on the land, vegetation, streams, ocean, air, and even outer space. But individuals and communities are doing things that help protect Earth's resources and environments. So the way we're kind of connecting those science standards to the art we're doing today is I'm gonna be using uh, basically garbage while exploring the Priest Point Beach and the Burfoot Beach here in Olympia, I brought a bag with me and I collected all different kinds of trash. Now, if you, oops, now if you um, also want to collect garbage, you might do this while work with, with a parent or guardian kind of wandering around your neighborhood or on the beach. However, if you just want to use materials you already have at home, um, the things you find kind of in your recycling container would be great because I'm going to be using plastic bottles and you probably have plenty at home as well. So, how are we going to put these together? We're going to use adhesive and we're going to be putting them on some sort of a firm surface. Now I'm going to be using a piece of scrap wood I had in my garage that I wasn't using for any other project. But you can also use maybe a thick piece of cardboard. Lots of people have those already in the recycling container and that'll be that'll work pretty well unless you're putting really heavy things together. To stick all my debris and litter together, I'm probably gonna be using mostly Mod Podge, which is an adhesive you can get at craft stores or at um, probably even Target, it's pretty common. If you don't have Mod Podge, that's all right. You can make something really similar by combining three parts uh, PVA glue, kind of like Elmer's, and one part water so that you can paint a little bit more easily. When I apply my adhesive to my surface, I'm probably just gonna be using either like a brush or a sponge. We're, we don't, doesn't need to be a really fine brush. We're gonna be kind of globbing it on and using it to stick everything together. Um, for some really heavy objects, I might also use some stronger adhesives like Gorilla Glue, but if you choose to do that, uh, get uh, a responsible adult's permission first because I don't want anyone to accidentally glue their fingers together or glue their fingers to an art project. Now, before I start putting my materials together, I wanna show off some of what I found because there was lots of garbage on that beach and point out a few safety concerns. So the one thing that you will find lots of anywhere, lots is broken pieces of glass. Now this can be really dangerous. So the safest thing to do would be to maybe not use glass in your project. If you do really want to use it, be sure to get an adult's permission and have them help you with those parts. I'm also going to be wearing some thick safety gloves when I put glass on my piece because I don't want to cut myself and I'm going to have some band-aids at the ready, just in case I do. But I found lots of different pieces of glass. Some of it's from bottles. Some pieces look like they were maybe from, I don't know, this looks like it's from a chandelier. 
all kinds of stuff. I also found lots of aluminum cans from soda bottles um, and all kinds of other things. And I've already kind of squished them down. This is one other thing where if you squish it or bend it a lot, you sometimes can get a sharp edge and it would be probably a good idea to wear some safe gloves or uh, make sure you have an adult help you with that part. Also found lots of clothes. I mean, I could pretty much make a whole wardrobe with some of the shirts, winter hats, socks. I don't have any matching pieces. I found one shoe. Um, a lot, it seems like a lot of people, I guess, maybe take off some of their clothes at the beach and then forget it or it gets washed away. All of these things, I also made sure to uh, run through the laundry first because they had originally lots of kind of dirt and um, dying organisms on them and they were pretty stinky. And I don't want to use anything really dirty or stinky for my project. Otherwise, it won't be art I want to keep in my room. And one of the biggest things I found a lot of was plastic. And this is a growing um, kind of problem in many of our oceans today. Yesterday, I was reading a science paper and I'm gonna post this paper in the comments section afterwards in case you wanna take a look on it. It was describing the prevalence or how common plastics have become in the ocean. So according to this paper, and I think this was a statistic from 2015, so five years ago, 8 million metric tons of plastics enter the oceans annually, so every year. And said conservative estimates suggest 5.25 trillion plastic particles currently circulate in ocean surface waters. Now, this is uh, something that people are studying a lot more about, but we're finding that it definitely has a negative effect on a lot of sea animals and also people. Um, so a lot of my friends love to eat mussels, oysters, clams, all sorts of bivalves. But they've been finding since these animals get their uh, food by filtering water, they're kind of accumulating a lot of plastics in them. Another thing I'm gonna post in the comments in case you really wanna push the science side of this art is a link to PEI, the Pacific Education Institute has a uh, cool free um, lesson plan that contains a lot of resources, um, both video and written accessible uh, to students in elementary and middle school about microplastics in the ocean and also has some cool forms you can, if you wanna survey your own neighborhood or beach and gather litter where you can log the kinds of litter you're finding. So to the art part, an awesome blage. What is it gonna look like? How am I putting this together? There's what I like about Nassim Blage is there's no wrong way to do it. I've taught a lesson with my fourth graders before uh, in a classroom where we first went across the street and we gathered bits of grass, little plastic wrappers, rocks, all kinds of things. And then we came back and I kind of let them put it together. However, a lot of times it's fun just to start piling and gluing things together and seeing what sort of shape you make. For what I'm doing today on my own, I kind of want to have a bit of an ocean theme. So I decided to print out uh, a, upside down, a male coho salmon and trace that at the top of my board to kind of give me an idea of where I want to start putting my materials together. Part of why it shows the fish was when I was looking at some materials I wanted to use, like the cans and the glass and the bits of plastic, they seemed kind of shiny. And that reminded me of the scales. Some, that's another way you might decide what you wanna do with your awesome blogs. You might look at what sort of properties do I see in these uh, materials and what might that inspire me to do? So I'm gonna tilt my camera down and so you can see what I'm doing as I get started. So, and take my Mod Pods over here. Now underneath my salmon, I wanna have an ocean bed with some sand and grain but also some of all the garbage that I'm finding way too much of in the beach area. So I uh, took in kind of a container, oh, so I found a gross tennis ball, um, some bits of sand and rocks, and I'm gonna apply a thin layer of the Mod Podge and then put some of this on. Now, another trick to consider when dealing with outdoor stinky stuff is I kind of put my sand in the oven for a little bit first to dry it out 
and kill any creatures that might otherwise be doing lots of chemistry that might be a little bit smelly. So I'm gonna put kind of a layer on here and then I'm gonna start spooning some of my sand and rocks on. Now the cool thing about Mod Podge is it dries pretty clear. So I'm gonna put a layer on here but once it starts to stick, I'm gonna put more glue over it and I'm gonna do several different coats. This helps to seal in the material I'm using, make it a little bit more durable and probably also help block some of the smells that comes from using things I found outside. You don't need a really fine brush for this because you're just kind of glooping this all on everywhere. This is fortunately one of the art projects where more is more with the glue and there's no reason not to use a lot. But make sure you're working on a surface that's okay to get glue on so you don't get in trouble. Put down a thin layer now. And once it dries, I'm gonna put some more glue on it. I won't be able to quite finish my assemblage today because there's lots of glue and lots of drying. But I promise you I will in a couple days post a picture of the final product to the Estuarian Facebook page to share with you. And I hope if you decide to make one as well, either with litter you find outside or with recycled materials you have at home, you would also Maybe uh, upload your picture and share it. I'm always interested in what other people kind of do with their art. So I'm just going to kind of leave that there. Another cool feature about Mod Podge is it's great for kind of sealing different things together. And one of the coolest things I found was this gross sandal. And if you look closely on it, there's lots of what looks like little crabs. Now, I don't think these are actual dead crabs. I think these are just molts. So crabs, they have their skeleton on the outside and as they get bigger, they have to shed their uh, old exoskeleton so that they can continue to grow. I'm probably gonna have this at the bottom, but I'm not sure yet. However, I do wanna make sure I keep these little crabs and seaweed on here. So I'm gonna put kind of a thick layer of Mod Podge on it. Now, it looks like I'm covering it up, but this should dry clear. And in a few hours, I'll still be able to see the crabs and the seaweed and all the debris that has accumulated on this sandal. So as you can see, it looks like just glue right now, but this will or at least should dry pretty clear. So I'm gonna set it aside. Now on my fish up at the top, let's see if I can get this down a little bit more. I'm thinking I want it to be kind of shiny. So things that seem kind of shiny are maybe tin cans, and let's see, maybe also certain glass pieces. Now I'm gonna throw on just a moment my gloves so that I can continue to work on this safely. So I like that this little top of a bottle is round, kind of like an eye. So I might position it here right where I think the same as I should go. And I'll add a little mod spot to seal it down. 
If this isn't strong enough to make it stick, I might come back and use a stronger glue later, but I figure I'll start with something easy. Now on the body of it, I'm gonna start kind of using my outline to help guide how I'm putting some of these tin cans down. And if I need to, I might squish some of them further with pliers, but be really careful. This is the kind of thing that can create some sharp edges. This is why I'm definitely wearing, gonna wear gloves for this time. And I might use some of my stronger glue. Mod Podge might work, but I'm gonna use this just to be sure. It's still on. What I like about this kind of an art project is it's slow. I'm gonna come back later and probably put more things on top of this can, but I'm gonna need to let this layer dry first. I'm also gonna apply some pressure so that I think it'll at least start to stick. If you really want to, and I probably won't do this right now, but if you have any sort of clamps at home, you can use that to maybe uh, hold down some of the pieces really tightly to your surface while you're waiting for them to begin to dry. As I'm just holding this down with my hands, I wanna point out another interesting thing. I found lots of fast food soda cups out on the beach. And these kind of seem like they're paper, but if you feel them, they seem sort of waxy. That's not actually wax. That's, uh, I believe, polyethylene, a thin layer of plastic. Now in second grade, which I've taught for a couple of years, we talk a lot about different materials and the attributes and properties of those materials and why we might use them uh, for a particular purpose. Now that thin polyethylene coating is great because that thin plastic coating uh, keeps water from leaking out. It makes it a great container for holding liquid. However, a downside is that this won't really compost or break down very easily in the environment. And it's gonna lead to a lot of microplastics in the ocean potentially if it ends up there. And think about how many of these sorts of cups are produced every year lots. So today, I'm just kind of, uh, if you think about the on uh, recycling, I'm going to go back up to my poster for just a moment. The uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, um, I'm reusing it in an art project. I'm using it again for a different purpose so it doesn't get thrown away. But um, what people are looking at is, well, can we design a different material that can be more easily recycled? Because not all places will take those sorts of containers for recycling and they don't break down easily in nature. So can we make something that will break down easily or can we make something that's easier to recycle? But also people are looking at the reduced part um, and a lot of restaurants and places that provide uh, food and drinks are looking at, uh, have policies where you can bring in your own container. Because if you're bringing in your own water bottle, you're, uh, you're reducing waste because you're reusing that more permanent container over and over again. This is, Durable enough, it won't break down easily in nature, but it's not something, it's not so nice I'd want to reuse it. So these are kinds of engineering uh, problems that uh, relate to, let me scroll up even farther, um, kind of the earth and human activity that uh, I think uh, there's a lot more research to be done on and future generations I think have a lot to con contribute uh, in finding uh, better solutions. So I'm gonna add some more stuff to to uh, my assemblage as I go along. Other interesting materials I found that I felt really inspired by. Uh, at Priest Point Beats, it looks like some people uh, practice golfing and they hit a lot of golf balls into the water, but they don't necessarily uh, pick them up afterwards. But I was thinking the golf balls one looked a little bit like the clamshells, which was kind of interesting. And then I was also thinking I could maybe have them in my pitcher if I cut them in half, which I did with a saw, 
which don't do without parent permission. It's kind of salmon eggs. Now salmon eggs are more orangish, but everything on here is a little wacky and not the normal way things look. So I figure it's okay if they're not orange here. So I'm gonna maybe find a good spot where I can have my uh, salmon golf ball eggs. I'll probably put them above the dirt over here. I'm gonna kind of maybe lay them down where I want them as I think about my design. And then I'm gonna apply some Mod Podge to it and stick them down more permanently. Hmm. I kind of like the way that looks. So now I'm going to start applying a thick layer of glue. Again, I like this project because this is one where you can kind of really use a lot of glue and get it everywhere, which is normally what your teacher tells you not to do. I'm gonna start, uh, I'm probably gonna add a little bit more over that. And then I'm gonna just gonna leave it to dry for a while. And I'm maybe gonna go into my bag of plastics and see what other kinds of interesting things I can find that I'll start adding to my design. So what else do we have? In here? You may notice at the bottom of a plastic container, um, Sometimes you will see, let me take my gloves off so I can move it a little more easily. A, let's see, where's it on this one? It's very faint here. And it's a little recycling arrow and there's a number in the middle and you can't see it on the camera. I can barely see it myself. That talks about what kind of plastic it is. So this is either a one or a four. And I'm gonna look online and see what does that mean? Um, so this is a number four. So this is a low density polyethylene. Most plastics in the ocean they found are polypropylene, which would be if there was a number five or some sort of polyethylene, which would be numbers two, four, and also kind of number one. So it's, all, it's kind of interesting to look at, well, what sorts of plastics are we using? Because they're not all the same and they have different properties. Some of them uh, you can heat up to higher temperatures. Some of them are a little stronger, more durable. I also found lots of snack wrappers. I hope that anyone who's a fan of the environment and viewing this would never leave their snack wrappers on the beach on purpose, but I found quite a few. And that's all right for what I'm doing today. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna add some of them to the bottom where I kind of have this, this garbage ocean floor that the salmon is just swimming above in my art. Also found lots of straws. So you may have heard in the news that some businesses were trying to move away from straws. That's because these can't really be easily recycled. They're too light for a lot of recycling sorters and they end up in the ocean. Um, at home, I like a straw that I can reuse. So I have a metal straw that I can reuse, but a lot of fast food places, there's lots of plastic straws. And if you do use them, We'll hopefully try and throw them away so they don't end up in the water. Let's see. Also found some netting, plastic netting. Now plastic netting is not great for uh, living organisms because they can get caught in it. And sometimes even old fish nets, if they are left floating in the water, after, uh, they'll still end up killing sea creatures. It'll kind of get stuck in them and not have a way to get out or sometimes even birds. So it'll kind of put their beak through it and then their beak will get stuck and they won't be able to open it. So I'm probably going to, where's my scissors? I might cut off some little pieces of this to add to the bottom of my awesome wash. And if you're using scissors, make sure you're using ones that are safe and you have a parent's approval and you're being careful about it. I'll put this over here for now. What else might I add in this time? I 
also found lots of weird little plastic toys that I think maybe got washed away or people forgot about. A fair amount of styrofoam. I don't know, some pencils, lots of drink lids. Again, if you can use a reusable plastic painter, it's always better. Also this kind of cool little eel guy. I'm not sure where I'll put him yet, but I'll set it aside because I think it'd be kind of cool to include this little toy sea creature in an art piece of a sea creature. Now, I'm gonna continue adding this for the next few minutes, but I won't be able to finish it today. However, I, again, I definitely will upload it when I'm done. And if you decide to make an awesome blog as well, I would love to see what you create. If you have uh, lots of questions about marine organisms, you should also check out the Estuarium's Ask a Naturalist Facebook page where some of the marine scientists that volunteer and work at the Estuarium can answer uh, questions you might have about sea life. Well, unless there's any other big questions, I'm gonna start kind of wrapping up what I'm doing here because I think this is gonna take me a while, but I am definitely looking forward to continuing to work on it. Uh, so thank you for joining us today on Arts and Crafts of the Naturalist. If you enjoyed our video, please give it a like. And if you wish to continue getting more of our videos, please click the follow button on the top of this Facebook page and also the uh, Estuarium's Ask a Naturalist Facebook page. I'm gonna later share the articles I mentioned today in the comment section in case you wanna look at them self, yourself or do any sort of cool scientific extensions with this art activity. Um, and I think that's about it. Thank you for joining us. Bye.